Hello, I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. At Tabletop Bellhop, we answer your game and game night questions. Tonight, we are going to answer the question, what is in this box? What's in the box? Welcome to the Cardboard Coat Check, our board game unboxing video series. Uh, today, I'm going to be unboxing a few different games that I got at Origins Game Fair, one of which is the 8-Bit Box, which Yellow Games was kind enough to give me a copy of to review. This being the first part of it. So you're going to get to watch me open up this box, get to see what's in it, and hear my thoughts live on what I think as I'm seeing the components for the first time. Same as you guys. Guys and gals. Um, at Tabletop Bellhop, we do answer game and game night questions. Normally, you can find us at TabletopBellhop.com. You can send your gaming questions to questions at TabletopBellhop.com. And you can see the answers at TabletopBellhop.com or discussed on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your favorite podcatcher. So enough with the intros. We're going to get on to open the 8-bit box. Now, I got to say, before I even open this up, this is one of the coolest things, in my opinion, that's come out in recent years. This is a board game system for recreating the feel of retro video games in board game form. It is a toolkit that will let you play a bunch of different games with it. And there are, as you can see, three games included. The three games included, um, we'll take a look at when we open it, but I think there is a Pac-Man knockoff, a um, track and field knockoff, and a um, I don't know, River Racer or possibly um, FX Zero racing style game should be in this box, as well as all the tools to play other games, which they call cartridges which again, fitting for the theme. So this is the 8-bit box from Yellow Games. I have only tool I'm using right here is an X-Acto blade just to get the shrink wrap off. Of course, the look of this is supposed to give you the feel of a retro video game controller. Okay, so it is gonna tip open like this. We'll try to get rid of the glare. Okay, it feels like it should tip open like this. Oh, there's a sleeve. Ha! Ta-da! Alright, it's a box. Spin it around this way. And here we have... Instructions, you can see three cartridges there. Not a lot of instructions for this. Wow, like pretty much nothing. So the initial instruction book is basically a list of components because you don't know how to play the game, so you read the games. So that's it. Two-sided, not a big deal. Then you have the box here, which includes, oh, this is just an ad coming soon. So here is our console. And it comes with the controllers, all in the different player colors. I gotta say, I dig the look of these a lot. So one of the things uh, when I was visiting Yellow at Origins, they noted that most of the games are program movement. So you're gonna sit there and set your controller to what you want your character or whatever to do. So you've got your buttons over here and you've got your controllers and there's something at the top for tracking numbers. Um, that looks like it. So you've got A, B, C, D buttons on this side and you've got number or arrow keys, right? Your eight direction arrows and then numbers at the top. So that's your basic controller. What I didn't get was the rest of the, the, the system. So this is nested on top of that to give you the whole look. Oh, other way around. So here's your basic look of your controller set. Uh, up to six players, obviously. And then underneath you have the components, which you got some dice with really unique set of numbers on them. I'll just hold these out for the camera, I think, without looking at each individual one. Uh, so this has got zeros and X's, X's and O's. Looks like an equal number of each. So a D2, I guess. Uh, this has one through six, so standard D6. This has blank, 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 negative two, negative three, negative three. 
This has plus two, plus three, plus four each twice. And this has minus one twice, minus two twice, minus three once, and blank. No clue. Baggies. Gotta like baggies. Then a bunch of cubes. What's interesting is besides player colors, there's different sizes of cubes here. Getting some glare here. I do apologize. Uh, I think the best thing here is I'm just going to dump these in here. And hopefully tip that up so you can see it. Yeah, that works good. You can see that good. There's a whole bunch of different cubes in different shapes and sizes and colors. Uh, they do match the player colors. It looks like two to three cubes in each player color. Three cubes in each player color. Um, big cubes and little cubes. Again, at this point, no one knows what these are for. Because all this tells me is what's supposed to be in the box. So what we're going to find out is what these are for is in the individual games. Now, I'm not going to bother rebagging this. I'm just going to toss the baggie in there. I'm going to put my console back together. So again, here's just the console part. And then the rest of the box is just a place to store your games. So up first, we're going to grab Pixoid. i got to say I dig the look. Like I feel like I'm holding an N64 thing here. Uh, this is very much a Pac-Man, right? So Pixoid says three to four players, ages six plus, plays in 15 minutes. Tells you what's in it. We're going to open each of these because why not? We'll take a look at what's in each of these. The 8-bit box is required, obviously. All right, so this is my first time seeing one of these cartridges up close. Oh, that's nice. Slides out. That's a, that's a good packaging. I like that. Uh, we have instructions. The instructions for Pixoid are significantly longer than the 8-bit box instructions because it's an actual game. Shows your component. Shows the board. Um, tells you how you're going to use the program movement. Program movement in Pac-Man, I can kind of guess what's going to happen. I don't know what the buttons will be for. Uh, then we have... Oh, interesting. It is a variable setup board because we have punch-outs. Um, oh, it looks like your characters can get angry. So there's or those are the ghosts, and then those are the angry versions of the ghosts would be my guess. Um, you have two-sided boards, so there's going to be a lot of variety. You've got one of these... Two of these, and man, they're well punched. It's coming apart in my hands, which is actually a good thing. Wow, a lot of these. Three. Uh, some type of score tracker, it looks like. That's going to puzzle fit together, probably around the outside. So this looks like it's going to be the outside of the board. So this is going to make a frame to hold everything together. Uh, a bit more. And another board. That's it. So no additional components in this except for board pieces. And the, and the ghost tokens. So no no more cubes, no more anything like that. So this is just going to use the components. Uh, I would love to tell you about the gameplay, but that'll be coming in later in the future. Watch my social media and tabletopbellhop.com for that. So that was Pixoid. Up next is Outspeed. This is significantly heavier than the last one. Uh, this is for three to six players. 8 plus 30 minutes. So, so far, one of the things that's slightly concerning to me is these are all starting to look like party games. 30-minute uh, games. So, nothing big and heavy. Personally, I like heavier games. But I'm, I'll wait and see. I'm hoping at least one of these has a little bit more meat to it. So, here's what comes in out speed. Uh, wow, this one looks interesting. Uh, even longer rule book. Looks like there's going to be a lot more components in this one. I'll flip through. You know what? I'm going to give it one more page, and I'm just going to jump to the end. Looks like lots of full color examples. Rule books look good. Yellow's always been good for that. So this is actually a significant rule book, the 15-page rule book. Then we have a ton of cardboard in here. Holy cow, look at this. Look at the cardboard in there. So we have some kind of player component. You know, like your dashboard, right? You're racing, so you got some kind of dashboard. Looks like maneuver cards. We got more dashboards, probably for the different players. I see some robots or upgrades, it looks like. Um, we have ships we need to build, which it looks like you might even fold them a bit to make them a little 3D. We have more dashboards. I don't know what... The, uh, there's a ton of dashboards here. I don't know if they're all different racers or what it is. Um, they are two-sided. I'll admit, I wasn't expecting heavy, but I was hoping for a little 
quicker than half hour games. I was hoping a little less. I was hoping for longer. So I'm assuming we have a sliding racetrack. It's going to be one of those games where you finish one, you put the next one up. They are two sided. I see a bunch of obstacles on here. Looks interesting to me. Programmed movement could be really cool with a race game like that. Trying to get in front of the right person. So same deal. Slides in really nice. That's well contained. Um, once it's punched, I'm hoping the little 3D looking ships stand up okay. So you can kind of see it on the back, how they're going to stand a little bit three-dimensional. All right, up next, the one I always forget when we're talking about on the podcast is Stadium, which is based on the classic track and field, which if anyone's my age, man, you remember hitting the A, B buttons, and you always knew someone who knew how to do it with like a toothbrush, and they would win. So we've got a bunch of different events in here. Same deal. It's going to open up the same. This one's actually even heavier than the last one. So same thing. Instruction book on top. This one looks a little simpler. We're looking at only 11 pages. There's a bunch of examples. I'm not going to bother flipping through this book. Um, trial title description. So we have a separate book here that tells you how to play each event. Oh, that's interesting. So there's a lot in this particular box. you got track cycling, equestrian, golf, team gymnastics, weightlifting, 4x100 meter relay, 4x100 meter medley relay, pole vault, archery, rest trial tiles, 100 meters, beach volleyball, anti-doping test, there's an anti-doping test aspect of the game, final trial tiles, basketball, fencing, and rugby. Oh, and taekwondo. So we got a lot of sports in here. Uh, we have some type of score track for teams. It looks like this is going to be a team-based team game because you have a red team and a blue team, uh, which is also the back of this is part of the track. I have no clue. Characters, specific characters, which teams they're on. Looks like they have hit points and stuff. Yeah, there's definitely red team and blue team. So it's three versus three. We're up to three versus three. And then we have cards for each individual event, which also make up the racetrack. We're going to speed this up a bit. So again, cards for each individual event I just listed, which I'm assuming summarizes how you play each one. It's a lot of events. Uh, Sean in the chat room is knowing it sounds more like summer games than track and field, and I do agree. Uh, like the old Epics series games. Looking at the box, it looked like track and field because I could see the javelin and the running and the long jump. But yeah, it does look like summer games. So that is it for Stadium. We'll throw that back. Now we do have one more box that says more great games than you can stick a joy shake a joystick at. I am going to guess this is completely empty, but we'll take a quick look. All right, we have a box. It's basically an advertisement. And it's empty, so nothing. I thought there might be ads. So now what I do know, and one of the things that got me excited to buy this is the next game coming out is going to be a Double Dragon inspired game. And I gotta admit, I am hyped about that. So here we go. This is the 8-bit box from Yellow, a board game system for recreating retro video game style play. Uh, we've got Pixoid, comes with three games, Pixoid, Outspeed, and stadium room for one more game in the box after that i don't know how you're going to store your games but i'm thinking i might just keep this console thing out on my bookshelf and have these sitting up somehow probably like that so you can see the titles very little rules in the base game because all it is, is a list of components put all this back together it all stacks nice it's a nice solid box and there we have the 8-bit box from Yellow Games. So that was our unboxing. Um, our cardboard coat check. Again, I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, on any form of social media. Uh, the main thing we try to do is be a dear Abby for gamers, answering your game and game night questions, with tonight's question being, what's in the box? Uh, you can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 
If you're watching us here on YouTube, it would be awesome if you hit that subscribe button. If you happen to be on Twitch, following us would be just as cool. Uh, if you do dig what we're doing, it would be cool if you went over to our Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. Uh, in addition to supporting us, we do have some Patreon-exclusive content like outtakes and bonus audio from our podcasts. Speaking of the podcast, that's recorded Wednesday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop, then released out to the world at 2 a.m. on Tuesday mornings, both as an audio podcast and as a video on YouTube. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo Tuzno. Good night and game on.